Yeah. What do you two? We back with another video. It's your boy, my team, man. Wait, he said, boy. It's your boy, right? Beat up. Stop looking at the time, right? What did he do? Uh, today, we'll be reacting to the 10 yeah. most terrifying and disturbing serial killers. Yeah, I think he's going to get that boy down. Uh, probably. Yeah. yeah. Psychologist Tom Powell sees in Israel Keys a psychopath. Obsessed with controlling whatever or whomever he could. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the 10 most terrifying and disturbing serial killers. The Tomer case was an awakening for Milwaukee in many ways. Uh, an awakening that, that there were people who were missing who were not followed up on. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notorious serial killers whose terrifying stories will keep you up late at night. Who's the scariest serial killer you know of? Comment their name below. Number 10. Robert Hansen. As a teenager, Robert Hansen would take part in hunting to escape his rough home life. But as he got older, his victims went from animals to human beings. The dense and rugged Alaskan wilderness provided the perfect cover for a fierce and sadistic killer. He would abduct women, often sex workers, and assault them before driving or flying them out to the wilderness. Here was where he would hunt them down like prey, toying with their lives. Nicknamed the Butcher Baker by the media, Hansen was confirmed to have assaulted and killed at least 17 women. In his confession, Hansen described how he would take his victims into the woods and hunt them as prey. In 1983, a movie and then you like, you know, try to let them run yeah. their lives and shit. Yeah. They think they get away. Because the animals, the animals got too easy for them. And they got a hundred grand chasing down, bro. What type of sick shit is that? He's sick, bro. He's sick in the head. He let them run, think they go home. They think they get away. Do that shit 17 times, man. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A teenage sex worker named Cindy Paulson was set to be on that list. However, she managed to escape when he was stalking his plane and alerted the authorities who would arrest him. He received a sentence of 461 years and died in prison after serving 31 years. After his sentencing, Hansen accompanied troopers into the field to find more of his victims, represented by X's on his map. Number nine, Israel Keys. What's most terrifying for the police and the public is a killer with no MO. But to make things worse, how about one who was also trained by the U.S. Army? This was the case of Israel Keys. I would let them come to me. Just remote area. Come, come to a remote area that's not anywhere near where you live. That the other people go to as well. Across the country, Keys had set up kill kits which gave him access to equipment wherever he decided to attack someone. After he killed 18-year-old Samantha Koenig, the FBI was able to track his bank account use and make an arrest following the demand for a ransom. Police arrested 34-year-old Israel Keys 4,000 miles away in Texas. Once he was in custody, however, it was discovered that Keyes was responsible for the murder of multiple victims. We did spend a fair amount of time talking about his crimes and his offenses as, as well, and those were those times were definitely um, very chilling to hear him talk about what he's done. Before he faced trial in 2012, Keyes took his own life and taking with him information that might have been used to solve other crimes. I don't fight for myself. I fight. Number 8. John Wayne Gacy One pretty common phobia is clowns, and the case of John Wayne Gacy certainly didn't help ease any of those fears. 36-year-old John Wayne Gacy was a popular socialite who spent his weekends dressed as a clown, entertaining children. 
Gacy regularly performed in a clown persona at parties and events, but behind the scenes, he was a rampant killer of boys and men. In 1978, after suspecting the police were onto him, a paranoid Gacy would confess his crimes to his lawyers. The police had what they needed to search his house, where they would find several remains in his crawl space. 29 bodies buried in that house of his on summer day, a crime of horrendous proportions. In the crawl space underneath, bodies covered with lime and encased in plastic, dug up a few days before Christmas and carried into the December cold. He was charged with the murder of 33 young men and would spend 14 years on death row before being executed by lethal injection. It was a circus. We were in a room at some point and we saw a television screen and we saw thousands of people lined up at least a mile down the street at the prison with signs, kill the clown, kill Gacy. Number seven, Marcel Petio. With France under German occupation in the 1940s, Marcel Petio, a doctor, preyed on those attempting to escape persecution. Later claiming he was working for the resistance, even though there was no evidence, Petio set up a fake escape route under the name Dr. Eugène. In the midst of the German occupation during World War II, Petio is considered a hero for operating a secret escape route for Jewish people attempting to leave Paris. He gave those running a fake vaccine containing cyanide before stealing their valuables and disposing of their bodies. With 23 remains discovered, Petio was executed in 1946. His last words, gentlemen, I ask you not to look. This will not be very pretty. He's thought to have claimed around 60 victims in all. Number six, Jeffrey Dahmer. From his late teens, Jeffrey Dahmer began a horrific killing spree. His victims were all men or boys, and many of his later crimes involved unspeakable acts to the bodies. Jeffrey Dahmer was responsible for killing more than a dozen people. The majority of those murders happened in an apartment near the Marquette campus. In 1991, Dahmer enticed Tracy Edwards back to his apartment with the promise of beer and payment for photographs. However, Edwards realized something was wrong and managed to escape. After he flagged down police officers, Dahmer's apartment was investigated and grim evidence was found, leading to Dahmer's arrest. His macabre 13-year crime spree finally ended when this man... Yeah, that nigga didn't get over, he still would've been that. Well, he probably, he probably got caught later, man. That's some shit, bro. Like, a nigga got escaped for the police to find that shit. Oh, nigga, never, never, never. The boy, the boy, the boy. One nigga did escape, they took him back. Yeah, they took him back to that uh, shit. Took him back to that nigga out to a lady in a relationship. <laughs> And Tracy Edwards brought the police to the infamous apartment. Like the others, he had gone there with the promise of money. He was listening to my heart, because at a point he told me he was going to eat my heart at that point. He was convicted of 15 murders and sentenced to life imprisonment. However, in 1994, he was fatally attacked by fellow inmate Christopher Scarver. There were a number of people who felt that Jeffrey Dahmer got exactly what he deserved. And I called his mother. She said, well, now everybody got what they want. The monster is dead. And then she said, he was my son. He was my boy. Number five, David Parker Ray. Sometimes killers go that extra terrifying mile with their modus operandi. David Parker Ray modified a trailer that would be labeled his toy box. The trailer was soundproof and filled with instruments for his violence. This was equipped with all sorts of torture devices, uh, pornographic pictures. Uh, it, he called it uh, the den of Satan. He would abduct women, abuse them for months in the trailer, and presumably eventually end their lives, sometimes with accomplices, one of them being his girlfriend, Cynthia Hendy. In 1999, a woman managed to escape the toy box after three days and get help from a neighbor. That's what I went to. And these, I mean, these are these people to know what happened. The police immediately arrested Ray and Hendy. On a plea deal, Ray was sentenced to 224 years in jail, while Hendy, who testified against her former partner, got 36 years. It's unknown how many women Ray killed, but some estimates are upwards of 60. He claimed to have abducted 40 women from across the U.S. Since no bodies were ever found, he was never charged, and he never will be. Ray died in prison in 2002 by heart attack. Number four, Fred and Rosemary West. 
Occasionally, serial killers come in pairs. You're talking about two people who literally have plumbed the depths of human depravity. While Fred had murdered in the past before meeting Rosemary Letts, Rose's first victim was purportedly Fred's stepdaughter. The two then went on a rampage, assaulting and killing nine other people together, including West's first wife, Catherine Costello, and their daughter, Heather West. Many of the bodies were buried on their properties. Even though they were not alive, he wants access. He wants to feel that he can actually be part of uh, this area, and they are part of this area. This is his private graveyard. After investigating assault charges against the couple, the police found evidence of the violence. Although officially charged with 12 killings altogether, that number is estimated to be higher. In 1995, before his trial, West took his own life, and Letts was sentenced to life in prison. And I was absolutely gutted. I wanted him to pay the proper price. And he just like took his own way out and had his own way about what happened to him. He was in control right to the end. Sick of all the ads like this one? Just head to adskiller.com. Click on activate now. Number three, Albert Fish. Nearly 100 years ago, New York had a killer on the loose nicknamed many things, including the Gray Man and even the Boogeyman. Honestly, it's not too far off. Albert Fish was a disturbed individual who targeted children. While we can't exactly list off the crimes toward them, just know they're terrible. To make things even more disturbing, the unhinged Fish sent the mother of one of his victims a letter describing what he did. Ten years after Fish began his acts, he was captured in 1934 after witnesses claimed to have seen him with missing children. Fish would admit to the murders, but would also claim he had over 100 victims. At his trial the following year, he was sentenced to execution, which was carried out in 1936. Sure. Number two, Harold Shipman. Doctors are meant to be people we all trust. This makes the case of Harold Shipman especially chilling. He was a general practitioner in England who took people under his care only to end their lives. Five of the 15 women he's been convicted of murdering died in his surgery. Normally, doctors have no such death. He signed 70% of his death certificates. Normally, it's no more than 30%. In 1998, one of his patients suddenly passed away, and a will, one that the family knew nothing about, gifted a lot of cash to Shipman. Police investigated the doctor and found evidence of forgery. He falsified computerized medical records. He entered false information on his victim's death certificates and lied to their family. Upon further examination, they found that many of his patients seemed to pass from overdoses of diamorphine. In 1999, Shipman was charged with the murder of 15 patients, many of whom were older women. He was sentenced to life in prison, and in the aftermath, there were thought to be as many as 250 victims. Now he's taken his own life. He was found in his prison cell at 6.20 a.m. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number one, Pedro Lopez. What's worse than a serial killer? Well, how about a known one authorities can't currently locate? Born in Colombia, Pedro Lopez was a serial murderer across South America and was nicknamed the Monster of the Andes. It seemed impossible that one man could have carried out so much violence. If Lopez was telling the truth, he'd rank among the most prolific serial killers in history. In 1980, after attempting to abduct someone, Lopez was arrested in Ecuador. He was soon charged with 110 homicides. However, Lopez reportedly confessed that his victims could total more than 300. Lopez, it seemed, hoped to gain a twisted kind of immortality. In 2006, the Guinness World Records actually named him the most prolific serial killer before it was taken down in bad taste. Unfortunately, Lopez was released from good behavior in 1998 and was declared sane. But as of 2002, after being linked to another murder, his whereabouts 
are unknown. He went back into the countryside he knew so well, to the killing ground where he had found so many victims. That was the last time anyone reported seeing Pedro Alonso Lopez. That's some shit right now, man. He's still out. He's still out? Yeah, they can't find him. Damn. Damn. He, he probably sent 2002. He probably dead somewhere. Yeah, he probably got old. Yeah. That nigga had a fuck around. Yeah, he fucked around. Don't kill it. Can't be found. It can't be located. Peace. So he probably ain't got down 400 plus some shit. Yeah, but he got 400 plus. 500 plus. Now he got a chip. <laughs> I want to talk to Siri Kill. Kill the Siri Kill. All right, man, that's do it for the end of the video. I want y'all to like, comment, subscribe, we're on the road. 10K, comment down below what y'all want us to react to. Anything like this or, you know, music, whatever. And we out, gang. We're going to start another vlog.